we'd like to make a proposal. For you to trade all that you have, your home, your car, and every possession you own, for a pair of sneakers. Or, for this old book. What do you think? Good idea? No, I wouldn't trade them for that. No. 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 Nope, no way. But what if I told you that these sneakers were worth almost $2 million? For $2 million? All that I own? And the old book we mentioned costs $30 million. It is all about a 16th century volume that compiled all the drawings and writing and was purchased at this high cost. And the sneakers were sold in 2021, the prototype of a famous brand that was valued above $1.8 million. And they don't even look that impressive. So let's offer that same proposal as before. Would you trade the value of your inheritance for one of these? Well in that case, yes. Now it looks like a good deal. For that cost, I'd trade for it. I'd make the trade. I'd be able to buy lots of houses all over the country. I'd trade for it. Why? Because I don't own anything anyway. <laughs> now, the decision is easy to make. Humanity. If we only knew what really was valuable, we wouldn't waste time searching for happiness in things that quickly fall apart. We'd exchange everything for that which is eternal. Unfortunately, this generation continues to lose sight of what is truly precious, God. Oh wow, what should I say? God, God, God. Salvation, forgiveness. TikTok. It's life. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is similar to a hidden treasure in a field that a man found and hid it. And with so much joy, he goes and sells everything that he owns and buys that field. All over the world, people invest their time and spend fortunes in equipment and research to find hidden treasures. Most of the time they find things that are worthless, but that doesn't stop them from searching, because they believe that somewhere they'll find the thing that they're looking for. And this is how they react when they find it. Oh my gosh! There is money in these things! Whoever discovers the treasure of the kingdom of heaven, finds an infinitely greater joy. In his parable, the Lord Jesus describes the joy that's sparked in those who find the treasures of heaven. Whoever wants the kingdom of God, has to be ready to give up every type of baggage in order to obtain it. And that's the only way that the treasure of that field can flow into their hands. Just like the Holy Spirit, the only investment that can guarantee true happiness. He guarantees eternal happiness through the salvation of our soul. Have you ever imagined entering into the kingdom of heaven? Living eternally in that intense glory reserved only for those who surrender all of themselves? A treasure for all eternity? Do you want to find it? Then follow the map that God has given us. His word. That's where you'll find all the coordinates you need to take possession of these incalculable riches. This treasure is hidden to the world, but not to the sincere and humble. I found the reason to live that I've been looking for all my life. I never experienced something like this in my life. I repent for not seeking the Holy Spirit before. If I would have known what treasure that is. Whether you feel like it or not, seek him until you find him. 
Whether you feel it or not, let go of all you are and have, in order to obtain all that God has to give you. Don't be fooled by the treasures of this world that are only fleeting. Beauty fades, cars rust, and money runs out. What good is it to own all of this when you end up here? What about your soul? You decide. Either take hold of eternal life, or keep grasping onto your small, empty, and unhappy life in this world. Follow this map, and it will be worth all the effort you use. How would you like it if God gave you an opportunity to start your life all afresh, brand new? A life that doesn't have the misery, pain, suffering, hardships, difficulties that bring you low, tears at night, anger, frustration, bitterness, division in the house, the things that are happening in your life. What if God could say, you know what? Let's throw those list of problems in the garbage and let's give you a fresh new start, a blank piece of paper to write a new life. Well, I'm sure that you who are listening would say, Ooh, I would definitely want that for sure. What, what must I do to attain such a new life? Well, through faith and by faith, the Bible says, the Word of God says, that we can be born again. We can have a second chance. We just need to put our faith in the one who said it and who promised to give us this new life. So if you're watching right now and you're feeling all over the place, confused, messed up, frustrated, angry, stay in tune because by the end of this program, you will at least see the way for you to have this new life. And the proof of the pudding is, the is to taste it, to really see what we're talking about in practicality, not just in theory, but in demonstration of power in reality. And we can do that best by showing you real stories, real life testimonies that were not just there faked or paid for to record and make up a false story, but people who really experienced pain and suffering, but today they have been set free. So stay in tune for this powerful testimony that you're gonna watch right now. And if you want, if you're, in if you're in need and you're desperate to talk to someone, if you feel comfortable, you can give us a call on our helplines that are being displayed right now for you, or visit our website and chat with us with our online pastor. Watch this story, learn from it, because this could be the turning point for your life. I carried a secret within me for many years. I destroyed my life because of that secret. And I found myself with a child of two years old, homeless and alone. Growing up, I had a secret within me. I was molested at the age of seven years old while Lisa was in the care of my grandparents. I carried this until the age of 21 when I came to the UK. I was angry. I was bitter within myself against my family, especially my grandparents. And I had so much grudges. As a result, I lost hope in life. And then I started partying. I started drinking alcohol. I would drink a lot. I would go as far as Scotland for alcohol, chasing parties, looking for happiness. I would um, go clubbing and end up the following morning in bed with the next person. And eventually I got into a relationship which I thought that was everything for me. I ended up having a child. Uh, but in that relationship, because I was empty, I was lonely, the relationship wasn't enough. I ended up destroying the relationship because of my attitudes, my neediness, my behavior. He asked me to leave the house. He was his. I ended up homeless. At that time, I didn't have my documentation in the country, my stay. So I struggled. As she was leaving at the hostel, you could tell her demeanor was, uh, she was sad, but she would always put up a front 
of somebody who's happy and she can manage. The living environment was not good. For somebody with um, a young baby of two years old, that wasn't a good uh, living environment at all. She wasn't willing to accept any help from anyone. Um, Shami was always somebody that wanted to be independent uh, and, and do things her own way. Through that time, I got worse within myself. Now it was more of looking at my child uh, with negative eyes. I resented my own life. I resented my family. I resented my grandparents. And then what made it even worse for me is when my parents my father and my mother then died. I even had more grudges against my grandfather. I, I just hated everybody. And most importantly, most of all, I hated myself. Even though I was suffering so much and I was having so much pain inside of me and I didn't know what to do with it. At the time, my hairdresser, she would give me the newspaper to read from the Universal Church. Once she was there, she was doing my hair. I read a story and it was my life. And I say to her, okay, I'll come today. I was coming to the church. What was holding me back was the pride. So I was within the church, but very divided, not taking things uh, that I was learning seriously, not putting it into practice. The grudges, the resentment, the bitterness, uh, all those things were still within me. I stopped coming. Uh, and then I went back to the relationship again and uh, things got worse. I was kicked out again. And then at that time, uh, one of my sister's friends then contacted me and said, we missed you in the church. So when she said that, I said, I'm coming on Sunday. The pastor said to me, do you believe in God? And at that time, I didn't I, I had heard about God, but I didn't believe. And he said, now tell me your story. So I said, I said my whole story. Um, and he said to me, now you're going to go back to the council. And by my faith, you're going to go back and you're going to ask. Now let's put God to test. The council said to me, okay, we will give you somewhere to stay. And when I saw that, I was like, this God that this man is talking about, I want to keep going. One day I was in a service. The Holy Spirit used the pastor to speak about, you could be here if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not his. That moment I was in the service and I heard that and then I left, I got home and I remember writing down a, a, a letter to God saying, this is who I am. I don't want to be like this. And I want your spirit. If I'm hearing about your spirit, I want it as well. When I was writing, I released everything. I went back to the service the next time and I would see testimonies in the campaign of faith. I would see testimonies. And I was like, if their lives are changing, I'm sure my life can also change. And from there, I started taking part in the campaigns of faith. I also realized I needed to empty myself. And I climbed the altar. I poured out everything. I let go of the thoughts, the feelings of being molested. I forgave everyone. I forgave myself. Lastly, I surrendered my pride and the dependence that I had. I said, my God, I am yours. And from now, you do what you want to do with me. And from there, I left the altar with, I am with you until the end. And I thought, that's it. And I had so much peace. I started loving myself. I started looking at people with different eyes. I stopped being critical of myself, critical of others. I started to see the results of my campaign of faith. Using my faith, I now have a better relationship with my sister. I now have a better relationship with uh, my ex, my daughter's father. I love saving souls. I love being used by God and I see the results of my obedience and I see the results of trusting God and knowing that, you know what, nothing matters than the Holy Spirit. Everything else I can lose, but having the Holy Spirit sustains me. Shami after the Holy Spirit is a different Shami from the Shami that I know. She is a woman of faith, somebody who 
you know, encourages others. The Holy Spirit has obviously transformed Shami inside out. She takes joy in whatever she she does. Even when she faces difficulties now, she faces them with a different attitude than she would before. Now I'm no longer homeless. I have a roof over my hands. Um, I have a home. I have a job and I'm doing well at work. I have a good relationship with my family. I enjoy my sister's company, even my siblings back home. My life has turned around. Above everything, I'm happy with the Spirit of God that sustains me. Faith and reason work hand in hand. The world may think that faith is foolish, but in fact, faith is intelligent. It teaches us that we have the right to be happy. It teaches us to reject a life of defeat and to take hold of a life of victory. If nothing in your life is working out, now is the time to use your reason and faith to bring the desires of your heart into existence. The Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Find practical faith for life. So you see how God has expressed His power through this person's life You see that their past was miserable all over the place. But today they are telling the world, including you, that God has the power to change their past for a better future, a better present, which in turn will give a better future. And I said to you in the beginning of this program that God can offer you a new life. He said it here. He said in John 3, 5, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born on the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And then obviously a person who hears this will think, well, how can I be born again? In fact, he was saying this to a particular individual who answered back, how can these things be? My dear friend, how, why, when, where, that's not up to you. The most important thing for you to do is to believe that you can have a second chance in life, that your current present doesn't need to stay and remain the same, but you can be born again. You can have a clean and fresh new start in life. It doesn't matter if you're 20, 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or even 70. It doesn't matter if you've had a traumatic experience, traumatic experiences in past. It doesn't matter if the doctors have told you that there's no way out for you. Deal with the problem, live with it, that's life. Your aunties, your uncles, your family members have it. It's in the genetics or whatever anyone has said to you. You don't need to stay with these problems because here it is written that you can be born again, have a new and fresh mind, heart, spirit, even a body. You can be healed as you saw in the testimonies, as you see in testimonies that we play here every every day. So the point that I wanna make to you is that if the world, family, friends, professionals, even if the best of the best have said, look, it is impossible for us to solve this problem. (sighs) Deal with it. God tells you, you can overcome. You can start again. You can have a second chance. And if I was you hearing that word, I would think, I want this second chance and I want it right now. And this is why we're gonna pray for it to be the first step for you to get to that new life, attain that fresh new start. If you really want that, you're gonna join me in this very simple prayer. And you may say, but I'm not a person of prayer. I don't really believe much in those things. I understand you, but just believe now for the fact that you're continuing to watch this and you're not going away. Just keep on believing. Give me one minute of prayer. That's all, one minute, a challenge. And I wanna see if God won't work the power of God in your life. Even if, if you are right now watching and you're feeling pain, tired, you really wanna disconnect, stay in tune because you're gonna be healed right now. You will be set free. God will make this blessing upon your life. So after this small break, we are gonna pray for you. Prepare a glass of water or a, a bottle of water that you normally prepare if you didn't because it's your first time watching. If you can, 
prepare a glass of water because we're going to bless it and consecrate it. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now I pray on behalf of those who have accepted this challenge. I said to them in a minute that they would have experiences with you. So right now, by the power of faith, I stretch out my hands towards this camera that which represents this person on the other side watching. And I rebuke and command right now incurable diseases, depression, anxiety, mental health challenges. Get out and stay out. And right now, my dear friend, you who are watching, receive from Jesus healing and deliverance and power. The deliverance that you're needing and looking for, God gives to you right now. And right now you can take a deep breath and say, I believe and I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. My dear friend, go ahead drink of your water that right now in Jesus' name is blessed and believe that God is touching you. Amen and praise God. You can open your eyes right now. Do you believe? Well, do the test, move your body, pick up something that was heavy, Take a deep breath and see how you f are feeling because I'm sure that right now that Jesus has healed you. I'm so confident that in Jesus' name, you are seeing a power, a sign, an experience with God right now. And it's a magnificent and wonderful thing. And if you're feeling that joy, you're there. Wow, this is different. I would recommend that you keep on using the faith and keep on believing as you have been believing. I would suggest to you even further to come tomorrow to our night vigil. We have our Sunday morning service like normal, 9.30, which is our main service of the week, to bless you, to consecrate the whole entire week. But seeing that this is a special occasion for it being New Year's Eve, we have a special night vigil that starts at 10 p.m., finishes around quarter past 12. And what's the point of all of that? Simple. I end the year in the presence of God and I start it in the presence of God, meaning that I'm telling God everything that I've walked for and done this last year, let it bear much fruit in the next one. And this year, my God, I consecrate to you for me to be protected by the wicked and evil things that are happening right now as we speak in this world and what they plan and what they say outside in media and so on. People say that this year is gonna be harder than what it was last, but not for those who are of God. We may encounter difficulties and challenges, but we go all the way and we don't stop. So my dear friends, I will finish here now and we want to see you here tomorrow. Tomorrow in our New Year's Eve vigil, 10 p.m. to have a brand new start in life. May God bless you, stay strong. If you need absolutely anything, call us, visit us, visit our website and you can see all the services that we have to attend to your needs. My dear friends, God bless you and have a wonderful Saturday morning. I live in the shelter of the Most High why should I be afraid? Whom shall I fear? He gives His angels charge over me. I will not be dismayed. You are my hiding place. 
Embrace me, my Jesus. Please answer me, my Lord. I need to hear your voice whisper into my ears. Please wipe my tears. They want to destroy me. To take me away from you. Prepare me a table in the presence of my enemies. And stay with me. You are my true friend. 